Good afternoon, everybody. I welcome you all back for the joint session on technical session two and three on the themes private public partnership in roads, ports, and highways, and private public partnership in urban infrastructure and tourism. May I now request the chairs to please come on to the dais? Dr. Vinay Sharma, Mr. C. Vijay Anand, and Mr. John Van Shonavan. Can you come on to the stage, please? I now take the privilege to introduce the chair. Dr. Vinay Sharma is currently working with the Indian Institute of Technology, Roorkee. He has published and presented around 120 papers. His areas of interest include poverty elevation and rural market development. He is associated with several international bodies and is a member of academic and advisory council of prestigious institutions. Good evening. I now take the privilege of introducing Mr. Vijay Ananda for the joint session. Mr. C. Vijay Ananda is a chartered accountant, cost accountant, and a company secretary with 28 years of experience in finance, tax, and accounting areas. He is currently working as joint general manager, finance and accounts of Larsen and Turbo Metro Rail, Hyderabad, Limited since its inception. Earlier, Mr. Vijay Ananda had worked in various manufacturing, infrastructure, and uh, service industries and a pub public financial institution. We will welcome you, sir. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, I will welcome back to uh, the uh, second session in the afternoon, um, a combining session, technical session two and three. The first one will be on PPP in uh, the more traditional um, sectors like roads, ports, and highways. And the second will be on uh, uh, urban uh, infrastructure and tourism and we start off with a presentation on the um, PPP in the port sector by uh, Professor Rakhmaran and I would like to invite him up to the stage. There were so many changes in the program that I do two things at once. I would like to give a short word to my um, colleagues on the left and the right who would uh, like me to introduce uh, to you and will uh, guide you through the discussion. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, good evening. Um, it gives me great pleasure to be here with you this evening. Um, actually, I am, uh, as the introduction speaks, I am uh, looking after the finance and account area of uh, LNT Metro Rail Hyderabad Limited, which is a PPP project, as all you know. Uh, it's the largest PPP project in the world, in a sense that uh, 72 kilometers of a metro rail that's happening at one stretch, at one go. An award for a 72 kilometers is the largest in the world so far. And it has got several firsts to its uh, credit. In that sense, uh, it's also the first integrated transit oriented development come metro rail project in the world. So it's a lot of uh, transit oriented development. Uh, that's nothing but the real estate that is connecting the metro rail system alongside the corridors. That is supplementing the metro rail's uh, viability, metro rail's uh, traffic. Uh, it's actually 18 million transit oriented development we are going to develop over a period of uh, uh, seven to eight years from now. And uh, this metro rail system also, there's the latest technology what we are going to use in terms of uh, getting the rolling stock, uh, which is the, with all latest features, and we are implementing the communication-based train control system for the first time in India, which is not uh, implemented in any other metro projects in India so far. Because you know that Delhi, Chennai, Bangalore, Jaipur, they're all projects are happening. But this technology is the first time we are using in this project. Similarly, if you observe on the roads, you see that these uh, stations are coming on the cantilevers. That's what the only central pier is uh, supporting the entire station. It comes like a V. So there is no extra pillars on the road. That's what the another technology which is being first time it's being implemented. It is called the spine and wing technology. That's also first time engineering model that we are experimenting here. And we have several other uh, uh, engineering uh, models that we are going to actually uh, do in this project. And the project is Touchwood, it's now going on a good pace. 
but we definitely we have also we also encountered a lot of issues in terms of uh, uh, right of way and then uh, road widening and also here and there some issues with uh, uh, land so but presently uh, with the available right of way we are not uh, stopping the pace and uh, the project has been tied up with the state bank of india as a lead bank and another nine banks and uh, it's one of the largest investments lnt has made in any urban infrastructure project so with this uh, brief introduction i would like to know and over to our colleague mr good evening ladies and gentlemen uh, we have been all uh, hearing on ppp and uh, we we got to know in the end you know we always realized that things are working and things are not working things are not systematized as yet and a lot of legalities are involved and so much uh, what i have always tried to gather is that who are the individuals who are actually leading the show why what are their own vested interests if at all there are and what are the public interests involved as far as public private partnerships are concerned this is what i have always realized now i hand over to you know professor raguram please to comment Uh, PPP is uh, on time and within money. That's that's an, uh, that's also for the presentations. Um, I'll be the horrible guy who will make sure that we finish. Uh, I think 15 minutes later, as we on the program, because otherwise I will take away too much time from the speakers. But each speaker has about 10 minutes uh, speaking slot and five minutes to answer questions, and that's be fair, transparent, and uh, integral. well this is a <coughs> paper just to bring out what are some of the issues in ppps in ports in india uh yeah just to give a broad quick start up on ports and uh, you know current ppp status and some issues and way forward uh <coughs> actually the question has been um you know i mean or we got into examining this because in the 11th five year plan which is just over the total investment in ports amongst all infrastructure sectors in india as a proportion of what was planned is the worst it's just a little under 50% so 50% of the intended investment so you know we were planning to invest about 88000 crore rupees and finally ended up doing somewhere around 40 43 44000 crores so we just thought let's try to understand you know which of the projects didn't get through or which got postponed into the 12th plan and what are some of the underlying reasons and that's so it's a very simple sort of understanding of that situation of course uh, in terms of overall ports in india we are we are closing in on about a billion tons of cargo 935 million tons which compared to many many countries in the world is actually very small uh, there are single ports that do about 400 million tons anyway uh, and this is 95% of foreign trade in india um and of course 77% by value remaining 23% actually goes a little bit by land and a lot by air our uncut diamonds and gold which gets imported finished jewelry gets exported that's you know almost 20% of india's trade we have 12 major ports and 200 non major ports i guess we all know major ports is central government funded non major ports are state government funded and the reason it's important to understand this distinction is we will see that actually in terms of total investments non major ports have done reasonably well compared to major ports so it's the central government which is having problems with the ppp while state governments seem to be you know maybe their own political agenda their own proximity to the scene of action uh, their own uh, uh, synergy with their industrial development so there is a lot more action in non major ports so of course if you see even in the last 2 years 2011 to 12 the total traffic in major ports has actually come down from 560 million tons to 546 million tons 
while non major ports went up from 353 to 389 and within that gujarat alone one state which is sort of shown there in red all the non major ports constitute 288 out of the 389 million tons of non major port cargo so i mean gujarat also in a way is dynamic and there is a lot to learn as to how gujarat sort of uh, gets on with their ppps of course overall ports in india we have ma one port above 100 that also is a private port it's a it's the port that serves the reliance refinery internationally at least 100 is viewed as reasonable for scale though i must say that probably this year two more ports will move into the 100 league one major port and another non major port that is kandla and mundra interestingly all three are in gujarat fine that's the investments we talked about and I, i won't you know these are some details i think i can skip that um <clears throat> so we have a whole bunch about uh, you know which are the major investments like the fourth container terminal in jawarlal nehru port the chennai mega container terminal the ship building yard in chutikoren the enor container terminal and so on you know the kind of investments that were planned out uh now within non major ports of course the 11th plan experience states revealed that barring barring gujarat and odisha the other seven states also actually gujarat was the big one and that created the capacity that was planned for as we saw it's almost uh, uh, over two thirds of the non major port capacity but all the other states also could not meet their targets for example reva sport Uh, is one that did not sort of uh, you know do what it was supposed to do in maharashtra <clears throat> um yeah i these are the projects that actually in our paper we have looked at these five examples as little case studies just to lay out the story as to why they have got delayed and that paper is there in the book which i think you should be able to, you will be getting a copy before you leave fine so now what are the reasons and i i'm just going to spend a few minutes on the reasons the first one interestingly is that though the 11th plan started out the targets were in place by 2006 7 the award of the ppp projects could only begin 2009 10 so we already lost out between 2007 to 2009 two years we lost out because the central government especially had not yet come to an agreement on the concession agreement so that is the first major reason why you know in spite of the fact that we had very ambitious plans for investment we over the five year term we lost two years a second reason is aggressive bidding maybe partly because of the delay partly because certain projects were somehow viewed that if you get that project you know you're really going to do great so two of them which had very high bidding one was the jawaharlal nehru port terminal at 51% revenue share i mean it's unbelievable what what is being said is if i get 100 rupees revenue 51 rupees i give away to the government and with 49 rupees i'll manage all my operating costs and generate surplus to pay for the return on investment same we had a bid of nearly 40% at ennor you know one was by singapore led port of singapore authority and the other was a spanish group but both of them when the reality hit them after the award was made uh you know maybe seeing the recession seeing that the growth story in india maybe was not as the way they envisaged and singapore probably had a reason that they might be able to direct traffic between singapore and jawaharlal nehru port and in a sense you know benefit from both sides maybe some of these as traffic assumptions didn't work out and both of them eventually pulled out by paying the liquidated damages but they obviously took the call that it was better to pay the liquidated damages than kind of stay on with this project there were also examples of 
on the other extreme, low or no bidding. <coughs> Chennai is an example. First round bidding, only one bidder with a revenue share of 5%. The government said it's lower than what they expected. And, no, and government has a right to call off either if it thinks it is lower than what they had planned in their detailed project report or if there is a single bidder. Under a single bid situation also, government can call off a project if they wish to. Uh, second round, again, they got only one complete bid with a revenue share of 5.25%. And third round, they just recently did, they got no bidders. I mean, not surprising. Uh, of course, that is partly because Chennai already has overcapacity with the existing container terminal. So at some time it beats me that, you know, government also is planning these projects. Maybe they want competition. They want a second terminal. But, you know, there are really no takers it, it, because even the first terminal is underutilized. The third reason is a lot of legal wrangling. No, actually, the fourth, first one I said delays in model concession agreement, aggressive bidding, low bidding, and legal wrangling. And legal wrangling cost by a variety of reasons. Now, these are the four front-end reasons. Behind these are a few underlying reasons, which is what I'm going to get into. I mean, the first cut reason, if you say, is, you know, would be any one of these four. But, you know, why? Okay, first issue is government clearances. Delays in government clearances, environmental clearance, coastal regulatory zone clearance, pollution control board, customs notification, land acquisition, security clearance. <coughs> and in many instances, these are different ministries, separate ministries, and they take their own time, processing time. Sometimes the legislation also changes like both in environment and in coastal regulatory zone, some of the rules changed. So then, you know, they have to go back, redo the bid, bid document. So there are delays due to all this. I guess partly we are still, I mean, different arms of the government are working. In their domain, they are trying to do the best. But how does it all come together to bear on PPP projects? Then there are certain types of investments which are to be done directly by the center. The biggest is dredging because these are, this is like a common facility to a port where I may have different private parties, but am I doing the dredging uh, or the dredging is taken for granted that the government is going to do the dredging project in time before the private party does the terminal investment. But you know, the government has not been able to award the contract tenders for dredging, and there have been delays. Sometimes the technical studies are redone. So that's a big issue. Hinterland connectivity projects. Again, uh, other ministries are in the picture, you know, be it road, rail, pipeline, inland water. All in many ports, you know, combinations of these are to be used for the evacuation of the cargo, and they have not kept pace with the PPP that has been put in place. Of course, Dhamra, which was the Odisha project which came through, uh, they took charge of the rail connectivity themselves because they found Indian Railways was not giving it the due priority, and they then made the deal and said that we will ourselves do it. The same thing had happened in Mundra some time ago. How am I on time? Okay. A uh, competition policy, I earlier referred to it. And, uh, you know, actually the government changed the competition policy and uh, <coughs> this affected 